The Parkinson's Podcast is brought to you by the Davis Finney Foundation and brings you the stories, wisdom, and expertise of people living with Parkinson's, care partners, and Parkinson's professionals. In this episode, Dr. Karuna Pooja explains how constipation affects levodopa absorption, discusses protein's impact on medication effectiveness, and shares optimal strategies for taking levodopa. This is an excerpt from one of our online educational events for the Parkinson's community. Remember, there are a lot of non-physical aspects to the disease, and one such is autonomic failure, meaning your automatic circuits start to fail, and one such is your stomach. That's why you get constipation for years before you even manifest Parkinson's. And as the disease progresses, that same problem goes upstream all the way up into your stomach. So meaning any pills which go into your stomach just stays there many times. Only half of it goes further down. Why do we care how it pushes down? Because levodopa is not absorbed in the stomach. It is absorbed in the first part of your intestine, which means... Anything which we take by mouth has to make it to the first part of your intestine for absorption. So if it stays in the stomach for the next one hour, it ain't kicking in. If only one of the two tablets at a, at a time which you take went through, you only get a partial switch on. These are all the variations which come because your stomach is no longer your friend. This is why we always say when you start taking levodopa, practice the habit of taking it on an empty stomach with a nice tall glass of water to literally flush it down the toilet till it gets to the intestine. This way, the absorption is as wholesome as it can be, and you can limit some of those erratic, unpredictable fluctuations. Protein in your meal interacts or messes with the absorption of levodopa. The amino acids, which is the building blocks for protein, so when you digest out protein in your stomach, they become amino acids. These guys look very similar to levodopa when the gut is looking at it. So the gut has certain channels or gateways through which these things can be transferred. And so let's say you eat a cheeseburger, so you have a couple of grams of protein and a 100 milligram levodopa. Which one's going to filter through the gates? That's the problem. So is that they're all going to flood through the gates and the, the levodopa has very little chance for absorption. So you get very erratic absorption each time you take food along with your levodopa, especially proteinaceous food. So we say to a lot of folks who can't handle taking the levodopa on an empty stomach, take it with some food which has very minimal protein in it, like orange juice, black coffee, saltine crackers. You know, So these kind of things have very minimal protein, so it won't mess up with the absorption of the levodopa. So ideal recommendation, if you want to stay clear of food, is one hour before a meal or two hours after a meal. Why? That's roughly the time for food to transit in and out of your stomach. So if you're going to take the pills first, you have to give the pills at least one hour to get out of your stomach into your intestine before you follow it through with food. Or if you decide to eat food first, you have to give it at least two hours to make it way down into your intestine, this way now there's a clear path for the pills to go through. However, as most patients will realize, as they progress with the disease, they have to take the levodopa more and more and more often, you know, four times a day, five times a day. This becomes cumbersome, right? Like, oh, wait, I got a plan one hour before, two hours after. So as much as they can, they can hold on to this recommendation. That's great. I usually tell them, Let's be practical. If you can spare at least 30 minutes before and after, but chug it down with a nice tall glass of water to push it through fast enough before food can come behind it, you've done itself a good job. But also, there's one more variable to this. Remember, as I said, it's only absorbed in the first part of your intestine. And so another major problem in Parkinson's is constipation. So if you haven't pooped in two to three days, all that is a backlog. These pills, it's kind of like railway carriages. They're supposed to go down every couple of hours, transiting downwards, downwards. If you're backed up, these pills, which you're supposed to take every four hours, every three hours, they're not kicking in, right? So patients will start to notice that the days they poop 
And the very next day, those are kicking in right, it's kicking in the full length. And the days they're constipated, bad responses. So they'll have good days and bad days in a week simply based on whether they pooped or not. Sounds very silly to patients at first till we you know, make it a hard and fast rule that they poop every day. I don't care how they do it. Diet changes, prune juice, raisins, uh, laxatives like Miralax, milk of magnesia. I don't care how they do it. When they do it, they, will, they notice an immediate difference without us having to even estimate the dose of the medicine. Just taking their things the right way. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Parkinson's Podcast. For more information about the Davis Finney Foundation and to learn about educational offerings and community events for people affected by Parkinson's, please visit davisfinneyfoundation.org or dpf.org. This content includes information, insights, and opinions from our Parkinson's community. The views expressed are those of individual participants and do not constitute medical advice. This content is not intended to substitute for the guidance, advice, or recommendations of your personal health care providers.